are boiling us like a frog in a uh, bucket of water. For those that don't know, you and it, it, it's true. I've talked to folks uh, who uh, eat frogs in uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and they you know that's where these stories come from. You put a frog in cold water and slowly turn it up. He will sit there like it's a hot tub until it's boiling and die without jumping out. But you throw a frog into boiling water, he'll jump right out. And it's this incrementalism. People are like, where's the martial law, Alex? Where's the police state? Where's the North American Union? Where, where is it? I'm like, do you see the troops with sidearms arresting people at the Kentucky Derby, regular army? Do you see the Super Bowl with troops? Do you see troops at the shooting in Alabama? Do you see troops at DWI checkpoints? Uh, now, do you see them with the jaws of life at car wrecks, all for PR? Uh, do you see them uh, using the Patriot Act in non-terror related cases and violating due process everywhere? Do you see Obama saying he's going to sign a treaty and uh, try to uh, push it through Congress to literally ban guns in the words of CNN? Uh, I'd read the thing and hadn't gotten that bad of an interpretation, though it does devastate the Second Amendment. All of this well, Alex, is going this, on. What this does, I mean, what the this whole hoax, and this I think is clearly a hoax, this swine flu or N1H1 virus, what it does is it prepares people for being so scared that they are ready to accept uh, military involvement, the UN's involvement, the World Health Organization's involvement is not questioned, and military involvement if the president declares it. Now, the fact that this is a hoax, you've got now the World Health Organization scrambling. They're now, uh, which I see absolutely no basis here in, the science or the history of viruses. They're now trying to argue that, you know, it, going from person to pig, can it jump back? That's a story that's being reported right now by the Associated Press. They're also saying it may mutate with other viruses or mutate on its own and become hyper deadly for the fall and winter. So you better take the vaccine they're going to have ready for that. And also, the you know, if you take a look at the history of what's been done, under the Security and Prosperity Partnership, and all the preparedness for the last 10 years, it's all been on avian flu. Uh, the swine flu issue has not been considered to be a major threat. Now, they've revived swine flu. That's now in the public mind. Uh, and they're trying to get these viruses just to have numbers, not names. And it seems to me the next argument is going to be that they can go between birds, they can go between pigs, they can go between humans. And it's all largely a scare. We have not had, since 1918, at the end of World War I, a pandemic that has caused millions of deaths around the world. But yet, this preparedness for it seems to be all out of proportion to any reality of a health emergency that has ever occurred. Yeah, it's clearly, in, in fact, they're even admitting that between the lines. They're saying, well, even though this may not be that bad, uh... It's still a good drill because a newer, deadlier one will come. I mean, Napolitano said that last Sunday. She said that seven, eight days ago. Well, and the other two things that make absolutely no sense, Alex, are that if this were truly a health emergency and the focus were to protect U.S. citizens, the first thing you would do is close the border with Mexico. That'd be absolutely the first thing you'd have to do to make sure that it was contained. China has virtually done that. China's restricting flights to Mexico. China is evidently rounding up Mexicans and putting them in quarantine in China, people who have traveled from Mexico. But we're not doing it in the United States. So it's clearly, in the United States, not considered to be uh, something that is of, a, of U.S. national security is not the first priority in our response. You just We're stop, 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 response. stop, stop, I mean, start over. You just hit the zeitgeist, Dr. Corsi, and that's the point I've been hammering, but, but I mean, say it in your own words and break down the different facets from your perspective. Again, I'm going to say this slowly. They said day one over a week ago, they said it's already spread everywhere, so there's no reason to lock down the border, even though the supposed main vector of something threatening the entire future of society uh, was about to come up here. Now, now their argument was it's already spread outside the country, so it doesn't matter. But any new cases out of Mexico, if it was so deadly, would continue to cause entirely new, uh, uh, you know, spreads of it. So, right. so, 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 day one, they said it's already spread. Forget it. Border stays wide open. Planes stay in the air from Mexico, the main vector. But 
we may have to lock down U.S. cities, and they did lock down some houses and homes and hotels and things and airplanes. We may have and, and grab reporters and wouldn't test them for it, but held them for a week. So, so, so think about this. They, they fear mongered and hyped like it was the end of the world. The movie Twenty Eight Days Later, but then at the same time, in their actions uh, here in the United States, it was like it was no big deal. So, so just amazing. Now, I mean, flesh that out. Well, clearly, if additional people were coming from Mexico with contamination that could be spread to others, which is the key component of how this virus is supposed to spread uh, person to person, well, then you would want to block the border and keep infected people from coming across if national security of the United States were, and health security were the primary objective. It's not, because by keeping the border open, accepts the risk that others infected in Mexico will come into the United States, even as illegal immigrants, and spread the disease. So clearly it's a lie that national security or health security of the United States is the number one objective of the U.S. government in responding to the health emergency. We're responding on a continental basis in which we keep the border open. Secondly, I'd like to have an estimate, Alex, of the economic damage done by this hoax. In other words, how many conventions were canceled? How many trips were canceled? What's the damage in terms of not only the vacation industry and the travel industry, but what's, what's the damage overall to international business? Uh, Mexico has just about been shut down. Now, I'm anticipating that the very next thing we're going to see is that we need economic aid to Mexico. Suddenly, Mexico is going to become our responsibility to have some kind of repayment to Mexico. Already happened. The They're already, already happened. Already happened. They're saying 47 billion IMF SDRs, the first money out of the new global currency. Again, for those that don't know, you won't see these SDRs, you know, floating around at McDonald's or at your bank. These are interbank lending, governmental lending. Uh, 47 billion SDRs already being drawn on by Mexico and talk of the United States and Europe paying for those because of the crisis. Well, there you go. See, this also, the International Monetary Fund with these SDRs, I've been reporting on that extensively. extensively. It's also going to be very expensive. I've been reporting on it because this is the new international currency that China wants to replace the dollar as a standard of foreign exchange reserves. Now, they can be, if the SDRs can be used uh, in, in Mexico to handle the economic damage done by the swine flu, and there's no, that wasn't what China was proposing. But I see here even, uh, even Bloomberg is reporting, and has been reporting since April 28th, that Mexico will draw $47 billion line of credit from the IMF on these SDRs to handle the swine flu. So there you are. I mean, this is the, you know, the, there's an economic agenda here which advances the use of the International Monetary Fund as being a alternative to the World Bank for creating a new world currency. So there's a lot of agendas here. The What's clear is if you look at just the number of illnesses and fatalities, they are so minimal that the the cost should be going back on the Obama administration for having scared everyone, and the fact that that's not happening just shows how convincingly this agenda of fear can be put forward, even when there's no reaction, there's no disease, there's so, just like a less than a normal flu. It's inconsequential. So, from the globalist perspective, Doctor Corsi, we have passed the test. The fear mongering from something that killed thousands of times less what a regular run-of-the-mill flu does. Literally, we're talking conservatively 250,000 people die a year, according to the World Health Organization, globally, sometimes as much as 500,000. Now, if you go back to the old pandemics, 40 million in, in one year with the swine flu. But in a normal year, quarter million people die from the uh, regular flu. This thing has killed uh, literally one one-thousandth of a regular year, probably. And meanwhile, they acted like it was the end of the world. we got to have global government, forced inoculations, lock down U.S. cities. But the borders stay wide open. None of this makes any sense. Uh, so I guess we've passed the test, according to the globalist. We are ready to really give up all of our liberty. If we'll give up all of our liberty for a fake flu, 
Imagine if somebody in government inside the New World Order releases something real, Dr. Corsi. Well, the, the next time this happens, it's going to have to be, public is just not going to react immediately to these kind of warnings. Although these warnings are put out in a way that is very frightening. They're very frightening, and, they're, and people immediately become, you know, they flash to plague ideas or the 1918 flu influenza. We have not had a pandemic since 1918. Even the SARS outbreak out of China was minor in terms of the world population or in terms of the number of people who were sick. This is not 1918. People are well, much more effectively inoculated. Uh, they're much more effectively exposed to flus. And uh, I, I have believed from the beginning and suspected from the beginning that these um, avian and swine and other flus are largely a scare and a hoax, which has no basis in medical reality. I don't see any basis for it. Except to sell vaccines.